one and peace of Christ all of you please invite your friends and share the link with everybody you know and please don't repeat text in the chat otherwise I will block you myself even if you are a person trying to support because remember we are not a bunch of kids here we are adult mature people so you post a comment post it once twice that's it you will three time I will block you myself now our topic today is <clears throat> we have here a gentleman his name uh, Mr. Ivan and Ivan you know the Muslim they put him in display and invite him to conferences because he is a miracle I mean how a redhead became a Muslim this is why the Muslims are excited about it but the second you start listening to this guy you will see that this guy he do not have an idea why even he convert to Islam <clears throat> Now, I made a comment actually in his video saying to him, watch my video and laugh at yourself about what you said. And I wish I can play all his video, but it's an hour and 12 minutes and you know, they will fly, flag my video for copyright if I do so. Uh, so we will play a little bit of his video and right away we'll start laughing. When I left Christianity, it was because of the fragility of the proofs that were put forward. You know, it was because of the fragility of the proofs of the Bible and the fragility of the proofs of, of you know, the Holy Spirit and all of these things that caused me. <laughs> I mean, you're hilarious. So what is the proof you have in Islam about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit became an angel? I mean, you are a certified idiot. So you say the proof? What do you mean by the proof? What does that mean exactly? Shall we bring you the Holy Spirit in front of you? It's a spirit. Shall we call the Holy Spirit come to come to you? So what is the proof of the Holy Spirit in Islam? You see, when we uh, uh, like, if you if you are saying something is exist in Christianity but it's not exist in Islam, then you can say, okay, this guy, it, you know, he did not find it in Islam, so he went there. But what is the proof of the Holy Spirit in Islam? If we go in the Quran, I mean, you'd not even speak for a second and you, you force me to lie, to, 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 to laugh at, at, at your words, at your lies. Because if we go and search in the Quran, and we type the word Ar-Ruh Al-Qudus, we will not find any place in the Quran that says that Ar-Ruh Al-Qudus is an angel. So you believe in the lie? You believe that you are a, for a person who, who follow a truth, but it's a lie. What is the proof and where the Muslim get the answer that the Ruh Al-Qudus, the Holy Spirit, is an angel? And why it is holy? Why this angel is holy? You will notice that the second we say a Ruh al Qudus, we will find it attached only to Jesus. Chapter 2, verse number 87. Allah supposedly support Isa by the Holy Spirit. Supported who? Isa by the Holy Spirit. All right? Okay. That's wonderful. If there is any weird place or any place in the Quran it says that Allah he supported Muhammad by the Holy Spirit? Never. Chapter 2, verse number 253. Again, it's about Isa, which Allah he supported him, strengthened him by the Holy Spirit. Okay, anywhere else? Chapter 5, verse 110. It's about Isa. Supposedly, this is Jesus according to Muhammad. Again, he is the only one supported by the Holy Spirit. As simple as that. So where Muhammad being supported by the Holy Spirit? The Muslim, they will say to you, there's a chapter, it's called chapter 16, verse 102. It says the following. Say, the Holy Spirit has brought the revelation from the Lord. In truth, okay, but this is cannot be true because Muhammad he did not receive revelation, he received uh, delivery. 
Muhammad, as the Muslim, they say, a person, a man, perfect man, he came to him, he squeezed him three times, and he told him, read. So how that is a revelation? Remember the Quran speak about revelation with the word wahi, and wahi mean inspiration. Wahi does not mean delivery. The Quran says, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى It is nothing but inspiration. So did Muhammad receive inspiration? According to you, Muslims never. Because inspiration is something happening in your heart, not somebody squeezing you and telling you what to say. That is not inspiration. So this book is a very stupid silly book it doesn't make sense even against its own. Did I receive revelation or I receive revelation as inspiration? Did I receive revelation as delivery or it was inspiration? I mean, all of you, you know what the word inspire mean. An inspire is not somebody coming to me, squeezing me three times and says to me, read. And until now, we do not know even why the, why the heck this person, he came to him and he said to him to read if he do not know how to read. The Muslim, they will say to you, oh, he was saying recite. Recite is a word you say to somebody he already knew in his memory something. He will recite it. This is why recite. Recite. There's difference between recite and repeat. So the verse in Arabic says, Iqra. Iqra means read. Qarra wara. This is Aramaic word. From Qarra, he said, wara, which means what, from what he saw. So he have to say something he saw. Well, what Muhammad saw nothing. Did he give him a book? In the same time, what is the word inspiration is gone? So when you say I am person uh, in the Christianity, I could not receive any proof about the Holy Spirit. Did you receive anything, any proof about the Holy Spirit in Islam? Did Jibreel appear to you too? Like, you know, if we ask ourselves about the proof of the Holy Spirit as Jibreel, we will find the Muslims believe that the first time Muhammad, he saw the Holy Spirit, Aka Jibreel, remember, we don't believe in this Holy Spirit in Islam. Khadija, she did a striptease. This guy, he said that he did not find the proof of the Holy Spirit in Christianity. Well, even Muhammad, he could not find the proof in the Holy Spirit in Islam. To the point his wife, Khadija, she had to do striptease and she asked him to sit as if he's a monkey in the top of her left thigh. And then she asked him to go to the, left, to, the, to the right thigh. And then she said to him, do you see him? Because he saw somebody in the corner. He was not sure if he is a shaitan, Satan, or he is Gabriel. This is the book of Asira, Ibn Hisham, volume number one, page number 239, and this is your Muslim website. I know you are dumb, you stupid, you do not speak Arabic, and this is why you converted to Islam, possibly. If we click translate, you will see the story. The most hilarious story ever. So this guy, he said he could not find the proof of the Holy Spirit in Islam. So Khadija, she found it in Islam. Muhammad, he did not. Khadija, she discovered a way that if Muhammad sat in the top of her left thigh and she asked him, my cousin, sit in my left thigh. He said, uh, 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 Messenger of Allah, sit, sit. Uh, okay, he said, so he said, she said, do you see him? He said, yes. <laughs> then she said, turn around, turn around, sit on the right thigh. And then she said, so the Messenger of God, May Allah pray on you. Turn and sit on the right side. He said, okay, he moved. As if he's a kid, as if he's a child, if he's a monkey. And she said to him, do you see him? I mean, this is the prophet of God. His wife, she's asking him to sit in the left thigh and the right side. How in the world Muhammad even agree? How in the world this man, he claimed to be a prophet of God. He agreed to do such a stupid thing. Sit in my thigh. And why? Because she would approve to him if this is shaitan or an angel. And then he said, yes, I see him, after he sat in her right thigh. And then she turned the brother, 
and she asked him to sit in the top of her lap like what the heck Abdul in order to receive a proof about the Holy Spirit in Islam you need to ask your wife to ask you to sit in the left thigh and then move to the right thigh and she will ask you do you see him oh, by the way do you see him <laughs> and then if you still you're saying yes <laughs> Then you have, she will ask you to sit in the top of her lap. <laughs> and then she will ask you, do you see him? And then you will say, yes, I see him. Yes, I see him. I see him very much. He is here in the corner. Huh? Yes, I see him. I see him. Okay, she said, now, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. She fell down and threw down her veil. She starts stripping. She took off her clothes, stripping. And now Muhammad, he sat in the top of her. And then she said to him, do you see him? He said, no. She said, the glory to Allah. My cousin, rejoice. This is an angel, not the devil. So this is the proof that Muhammad, he received Quran from the angel Jibreel, which in a miraculous way became the Holy Spirit. So this dummy here is trying, and this is why they bring him. I mean, they, you know, it's it's, it's a show time. Those people, they make money. They became superstars. They have no job. They don't do anything. They just pay for their ticket. Come here, speak about who you became a Muslim so we can fool more people like you. Do you want to make money? Because if you are a person who speak about why, and then you say prove, then we find that the proof to your prophet was the legs and the boobs of his wife. And here we ask ourselves, how in the world Khadija she came to the conclusion that this is a devil, not an angel? Where she learned this? Where she learned that if you do strap these, this person will leave. And as long as she knew that the way to know if he is an angel or not is taking off her clothes and start having sex. Why she did not do it right away? What the point of left leg? left thigh and right thigh and sit in the top of my lap and then hold my whatever and then what the heck is that is that a porn go to the end take off your clothes the muslim they will say to you oh because if he's a shaitan brother he will sit and watch <laughs> So are you saying that Jibreel, he cannot see from behind the wall? <laughs> and why Jibreel is sitting in the, in the bedroom of Muhammad in the corner anyway? <laughs> so this person saying, I could not find proof in Christianity about the Holy Spirit. Hmm. You found it in Islam, right? By the legs of Khadija and her nipples. Tell us more with your wisdom. Dumb. To leave Christianity. And my one condition yeah. going forward, when I started to look into Judaism, when I started to look into Hinduism, when I started to look into Buddhism and, and all of the other isms and, 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 Zimism, and yeah. uh, religions out there. Uh, uh, hold on. Zimism? Are you talking about Zimzam now? <laughs> According to the BBC study, they found that the, 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 the spring of Zamzam or the well of Zamzam is full of arsenic, which means every cup you drink is like you are smoking two bags of cigarettes. It's a poison water. Zamzam. Was I wanted proof. Um, I remember my grandfather telling me growing up that the truth always comes with proof. Exactly. So what is the proof that Muhammad is a prophet? <laughs> Let us go to the Quran. The proof, brother, the proof, the proof. Muhammad, he have all the proofs. So why when the Jews, they said to him, well, you know, Allah, he put condition on us. Uh, we will not accept, he, he made us, he, he made us like take an oath 
that we will not accept a prophet unless he gave a sacrifice and Allah he will send a fire to consume that sacrifice Allah put conditions he said to them you cannot do that and this is exactly what happened he started with Adam as you remember as a Muslim you don't you remember when uh, when Adam uh, 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 sons they were fighting uh, of the two sisters one she have a cross eyes and the one the other one she don't have a cross eyes and both Adam sons they want to have sex with the women or the sister who have no cross eyes <laughs> what a story <laughs> then Allah he inspired Adam to make them make a sacrifice and then the one who Allah accept his sacrifice he will marry the sister so they made a sacrifice and then one of them he gave a crops and the other one he gave a ram and then Allah he sent the fire and he consumed the ram and this is exactly what happened with Abraham Abraham he gave a sacrifice and then Allah himself supposedly he gave a sacrifice and he will ask the Muslims why in the world Allah want to give sacrifice to Allah don't you Muslims say why Jesus want to sacrifice himself and he's God Allah sacrifice to who but this is a different story for now. So Allah, he told the Jews, don't accept anyone to be a prophet because he will be a liar unless he do the following. He should, read with me carefully, this is chapter three, verse 183. They said, Allah took our promise not to believe in any messenger unless he showed us a sacrifice consumed by fire between two brackets from heaven. Say, <laughs> here is the time of the proof. See, they ask for the proof. All what they want, do what Abraham did. Do what Abraham did. Do what the, uh, the children of Adam did. Give sacrifice. Allah, he gave us a condition. He says, don't accept any prophet. So here you will notice the Quran did not say, Allah did not say that to you. No, he agree. But the excuse is, say, there come to you messenger before me with a clear sign. And even with that, with what you ask for, which means uh, consuming fire, okay. Then, did you slay them if you speak the truth? Like, what the heck? Who are they, those who they, they gave sacrifice? And then God, he sent the fire to consume it, and the Jews, they slew, slew, slew them. And he, and he was them can't tell me. Who is the prophet who gave a sacrifice, and then Allah, he sent the fire, consume it, and then the Jews, they killed him. Who want to give me the name? Remember, this is your Quran. This is your religion. So you notice here that the Jews right away, they were straightforward. If you are a prophet, do what prophet do. Okay, God, he made a request from us. Says, if you, if there is a person, he come to you, claim to be a prophet, ask him to do the following. If he fail, he is a fraud. Muhammad, they agree, he's a fraud. The excuse is, he cannot do it. So this dummy here is saying he, you know, he did not find proof in other religions. So what is the proof about Muhammad? What about Muhammad predicting when Jesus will come? When Muhammad he said, and this is in Arabic, and you are a dummy, you do not know Arabic yet, you became a Muslim, claim to Allah, and pray in Allah, you pray to Allah in Arabic, but you do not know Arabic. It says here, if you don't believe, go to the dictionary, any dictionary if you wish, and see what Yushiku mean. Yushiku mean almost there. Yushikna, Yushikna what mean? That very soon, extremely soon, Shortly, you see, even the most stupid translation saying will shortly descend. Now, how short the descendant of Jesus will be? This is a false prophecy. This is 1400 years ago. And not only that, Muhammad, he made it more, it's more clear in different hadith. Actually, let me find it because I just remember it. Because in that hadith, he claimed that Jesus even is going to come when Muhammad is between them. 
or at least when those people are in front of him, they are alive. Let me find the hadith. There we go. Read carefully. Allah Apostle said, how you will be when the son of Mary, between two brackets, i.e. Jesus, descend among you and your imam among you. Do you see it? This is Al-Bukhari. Muhammad, he claimed that Jesus will descend to the people who they are in front of his eyes and he will lead their prayer. What the heck? This is a religion? And this is a prophet? And by the way, Muhammad, when he gave them those verses, he was speaking about Jesus in the Quran, where he said that this is a sign of Jesus to come down. It's a sign of a judgment day. This is a chapter 43, verse number 61. And Jesus shall be the sign for the coming of the hour, of the judgment day. Do you see it? There's no doubt about it. Actually, we believe. That's true. Muhammad is trying to copy the Bible. The fraud Muhammad, the one who have a lust for children, his lust cannot stop him even though he claimed to be a prophet, but he could not control his lust and desire. So, the coming of the Messiah is the sign of the judgment day. That's wonderful. And when the judgment day will be? In the time where the believers of Muhammad, the Sahaba, the companion of Muhammad, they are alive. Amongst you. He did not say amongst generations to come. He's speaking to people in front of him. He said, Son of Mary, he would descend amongst you, and your Imam is among you. Before this Imam, he died. Who is the Imam of the Muslim at that time? Muhammad. <laughs> Do you see the stupidity? Do you see how we got Muhammad busted? So you are telling me that you could not find the proof in Christianity, you found it in Islam? Not to forget to mention the sperm is coming from the backbone of the man and the sperm coming from the ribs of the women and Allah, he placed mountains as, uh, 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 as nails in the top of the earth and this is absolutely false because mountains nobody place it it's part of the earth this is so stupid to say and the god who don't remember which one he created first the mountains or the stars so chapter 41 says something chapter 79 says something else chapter 2 says something different so this is the god who said if this is a book other than allah you will find a lot of contradiction but you know I have to go with this guy. I have to give him some credit. I mean, there is many proofs of what Muhammad he say. I was sitting once and I was half in the shade and half in the sun. So my teacher told me that I shouldn't do that. When I asked for the reason, he said, because this is where shaitan sits. So he is uh, asking me, can you elaborate? Yeah, I can easily elaborate. Can elaborate. This is what the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's it. The proof is there. Do you want the proof? The guy, he said, the proof is in Islam. We are, I found the proof in Islam. Who, who said so? Muhammad. A religion based in one man witness. Nobody saw him receive a revelation. Nobody saw him going up to the sky. Nobody saw him do anything. Sure, I can elaborate for you. Like, what a big deal, man! Why you cannot sit in the shade? I mean, this is, look at the look at the deep knowledge of this religion, man. 
you cannot sit half in the shade and half on the sun which half is in the sun there's a different like if, there, if my left half or right half which one i'm confused now should i turn my back here there what so there you are in danger brother you are in danger what happened because you are half of you in the shade and half of you in the sun like why because shaitan he said there like so what let us say for the sake of argument you stupid idiots who believe in such a garbage religion what is that have to do with me anyway let us say for the sake of argument shaitan he liked to sit half in the sun and half in the shade and let me ask you so when it's the snowing six months shaitan he said where because there's no shade half sun half so i mean where he will where we will go and when it's night shaitan he said where he stays sitting half in the shade and half in the sun and this guy, he just told us that he, he found in Islam there's proofs. Like, what the heck? He, give us some proofs. I was sitting once and I was half in the shade and half in the sun. Let me call 911. Brother, sister, police? Yes, I, I have somebody here. He's sitting half in the sun, half of the shade. So what, tell him not to move. Tell him not to move. We are going to send the fire department right away. Stay there. Don't move. Don't ever let him move. Okay? Like, what happened? Because this is where Satan, he said, like, what the heck? And drink, yeah, drink. So my teacher drink so we can swallow the lies with you. Told me that I shouldn't do that. When I asked for the reason, he said, because this is where Shaitan sits. So he uh, he's asking me, can you elaborate? Yeah, I can easily elaborate. That's easy. This is what the prophet. Is it easy? This is what, what the heck? I mean, this is the easiest thing. I can. Er this is what the prophet told us. Prophet told us, alayhi salatu uh -huh. There are so many things, Yahya, uh -huh. that we believe without understanding. Look, what the heck? So what this guy was saying that I found in Islam approved. What, what this guy was saying, I found uh, proof in Islam, and, and here we go. We just we move two centimeters in YouTube, we'll find that there is no proof in Islam. Because this is part of our religion. Allah described us in the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah. What? Allah describe what? That we believe in the unseen. Ah. So I... But the guy, he said he believed in the proofs, not the unseen, because the proof is something to be seen. I mean, if you believe in the unseen and you claim that this is a proof, this is, this is really weird. Proof, when you have a proof, it's not unseen no more. Did you Muslim see Jibreel? Did you even Muslim see Muhammad or even Isa? Did you even see the chair of Allah? Muhammad, he saw Jibreel with 600 wings. And then different time, he saw him look like his boyfriend, Dahil Kalbi. Which one of them is Jibreel? Is he a Holy Spirit? Is he a separate or, or is a man? I were to tell you that Akhi, here is a mine gold. He said, wait, I, I can't see anything. You will not believe me. Don't talk about the mine gold because that will take me to the prophecy of the prophet of the prophecy prophet where he said that the Euphrates underneath of it soon soon we will find a mountain of gold under the euphrates river how where where he says before the judgment day but he just said soon jesus will descend among you and he said jesus he will descend and he will be your imam while your imam is with you which means well muhammad is there
So, is it true that there is a mountain of gold and that the Euphrates? Mountain, not a mine. You see, even the stupidity in the world is amazing because when you say mountain, how it's a mountain and it's under a river. Especially Euphrates these days is not even nine foot deep. It's dry and dead. According to Muhammad, there's a mountain. Mountain of what? Of gold. But not to forget to mention that Muhammad, he found that Euphrates is under the tree of Allah. <laughs> In the seventh heaven. <laughs> when Muhammad he went to the seventh sky, seventh heaven, and the guy he speak about proof, and nobody saw him. And actually, many Muslims they left Islam when he told them the story about him going up. And Aisha, she said he inspired by his spirit, not by his body, because his body was next to me all night. She got him busted. So Muhammad he claimed that when he went to the heaven, he found four rivers. Let us see the hadith. And those rivers, under the throne of Allah, under the tree of Allah, sorry, read carefully, I was raised to the lotus tree, and I saw four river two of which we are coming out and two going in like what those which is coming we are coming out the way are the nile river and the euphrates so according to muhammad he went to the heaven of allah in the seven galaxies in the seven sky and suddenly we find that muhammad he did not go to heaven he went to ethiopia and most likely he was taking a nap in Victoria Lake. But Muhammad, he could not keep his mouth shut. He said that the Nile River and the Euphrates, suddenly the river of Euphrates and river of Nile, they coming from the same place. While all of us renew that the Nile is coming from the middle of Africa and the Euphrates is coming from the, from the south of Turkey, which is the land of the Greece which the old man they occupied until now. So this is the proof you have that Muhammad he went to heaven. He found that the Nile River is coming from the Luta tree of Allah. I hope you can contact your prophet so we can hear him in Discovery Channel because he will be the best or to, he will make a YouTube you know imagine guys if Muhammad was exist and he have a YouTube broadcast every day we will die laughing at the stupidity of this man every single Muslim will leave Islam immediately because there's a huge difference between seeing the idiot or hearing about him now what we hear that he is holy, he is amazing. But the second you see him and you see how stupid his, his statement is, you will die laughing. Where is the where is the proof about Muhammad? Maybe the proof about Muhammad that's. Uh, the sperm stay 40 days in the belly of the women hmm? is that right Do you remember when the Jews, they come to Muhammad? Always, this is why Muhammad hated the Jews, because they got him busted many times. They got him busted when they asked him about Dhul Qurnayn. So the idiot, he, he took the bait. They told him, tell us about the prophet. His name is the man with the two horns. So Muhammad, he believed he's a prophet. So he started telling his stories, claiming that Allah is the one giving victory, and he found where the sun set. 
and he found the place where the sun set and where it set is in murky water. And as you see here, one of his find too, that the semen of the man stay inside the mother belly, not womb, for 40 days. This is what it says in Arabic, في بطن أمه, not, not, not womb. يجمع في بطن أمه, button is a belly. And yeah, you know, I have to say, Middle Eastern women, they put their babies in their stomach because they eat them. <laughs> so when they say that I found, uh, I found the proof in Islam, I die laughing. What, what the proof you are talking about? What proof we are talking about? Oh, you know what, Christian Prince, you are not sharing the whole video. There's many proofs. Let the guy talk more and you will see the proofs will come like rain. Around us. There are jinn around us. There is heaven and hell with so many things in them. There is torment in the grave, we say, we believe. There is torment in the grave. So now you are dead and there's two angels that will come and one of them, he have a hammer made in China. He will hit you on your head and then you will go 70 feet down and then he will say to you, what's your reason? If you say Christianity, he hit you. If you say Islam, you say, okay, that's good, that's good, <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> People say, believe in what? Are you crazy? Can you see anything? No, no. but I can believe but, but the, the, the other guy, he said, I have found proofs in Islam. And relate, because I believe in the Quran. I believe in Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, our messenger, and I believe in the existence of Allah. Uh -huh. So anything else is by default. By default. Like, like what? Shaitan, he take care from your ass, according to Muhammad, by default. Yep, he like, you know, he target the Muslim ass. Thank God I'm not a Muslim. I can go like bend over, I'm fine, I'm safe. He target only the anus of Muslims. Based on this, each time a Muslim he bend down, Shaitan, he put his feet in his ass and he take a hair from his, uh, his ass until he make him fart. And that explains the global warming thing. Therefore, therefore, when we wake up, yeah. we sniff water up our nostrils, nostrils three times uh -huh. and blow it out. Yeah. Why? Why? The Prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Do you see the proof? Hey Abdul, do you see the proof? So you found the proof in Islam? I mean, you're, honestly, your mouth is open like a monkey. So you found that other religions don't have a proof. And Islam is the religion which has the proof. And Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. Let me zoom in more. You know what? I see something. Maybe I should not zoom in because many Christians will convert to Islam after this proof now. Let us see. I think there is something there. Maybe I should not zoom more. I mean, this is dangerous. What is that? Is, is, that, is that Nike shoes? Shaitan, he wear Nike shoes. Oh boy. We got busted. Shaitan is there. He was saying the truth. We wanted to make fun of Prophet Muhammad, but Allah, he got us busted. We zoom in. Christian Prince, he tried to zoom in in the picture, brother. And look what happened, brother. Shaitan is sleeping in the nose. It's true. It's proven to be true. Alhamdulillah. He wanted to make fun of Allah. He wanted to stop the light of Allah. Who can stop the light of Allah? Nobody can stop the light of Allah. And the light of Allah told us that Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. How you can stop that? And this is proven to be true, brother. Go and buy a camera from Amazon that come, which is a, you know, it's a uh, Amazon, you know, owned by Allah. So uh, put the camera like uh, slow recording, you know, the slow recording. And turn the light off. Be sure you get the, the cameras which have like the night vision, you know, like the night vision one. And you will see with the proofs, shaitan going inside your nose.
taking his pillow because he, he he liked to take a pillow. He don't use boogers for a pillow. But and by the way, how big the shaitan is? I mean, the shaitan is something. If he is so small to go inside your nose, how in the world he will have sex with your wife? Don't you Muslim believe that genie, which is a shaitan, he can have sex with your wife? Don't you Muslim, you, your prophet, he says to you, you have to make a prayer before you have intercourse. Otherwise, shaitan will round himself around your penis and will do your wife. So if he is so small, sleep inside your nose, how in the world he will have sex with your wife? I mean, obviously, shaitan is not even in the size of a booger. A mosquito, because even a mosquito go inside your nose would drive you crazy. And by the way, why shaitan sleep in your nose? He cannot rent an Airbnb. I mean, nobody will know that he is there. He can go to any empty apartment. Is it your prophet? He said shaitan, he live in a Muslim house. There's a Muslim genie, he live in a Muslim genie, Muslim house. Christian genie, he live in a Christian house. Uh, atheist genie, he live in an atheist dog. What the heck? So why he is sleeping in the nose? I want to know. Is that because it's warm? But the guy, he said, he found proofs in Islam. Over our nostrils. Did you see that? No. no. But you believe it and do it. Uh -huh. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. This is true. I can... Okay, the, hold on. Go back. Where? Shaitan, he urinate where? Hold on. In their ears. Have you... In their ears. Not pray Fajr on time. Satan... Okay, hold on. Let us zoom in. Satan, he urinate in their ears. True. I mean, it's, it's it's even showing there. I can see some yellow line there in the side of his ears, my friend. Look at this. I mean, this religion is full of proofs. Why those Christians, those Hindus, those Jews don't see the proofs? I mean, it's, the proof is all over. And the proof in this moment is a piss. Shaitan is all over the Muslim. He sleep in their nose, he piss in their ears, and he jump inside their mouth. And he play with their belly button. And then he go, and he play with their anus. Yet this guy, he said to us, he found in Islam the proofs. He did not find proofs in different religion. We have to be honest here. Let us see. No proofs of Islam, my friend. And by the way, if you want to say to me, I don't believe in those things, well, who cares if you believe or not? Your prophet said them. That's mean you don't believe Muhammad. That's mean you are selective with your proofs. Do you believe in the Quran or you don't believe in the Quran too? Hadith of Timmidhi says, it says, yeah, when you give the Adhan, the Shaitan, he not only runs, but the hadith says lahu durat. Yeah. You know what durat is? No, what is it? Durat is. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. He runs and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Lahu <laughs> durat. I'm not making this the hadith. hadith and hadith. listen hadith. to the hadith like you first. You know what the deen is about. The deen is. You want to know what the deen? Deen Islam is. Deen means religion. This is the deen. Islam is this. Is fart. Shaitan, you pray. Shaitan fart. Hadith says, when he says Hadith says, because people start laughing, he's saying to them, shut up, this is what your prophet said, show respect. This is not funny. But this idiot, he said he found proofs in Islam. He did not find it in different places, brother. He could not find it. Those proofs only can be found in Islam, I have to agree. It's about getting the shaitan away from you. So, you know, you go into the toilet, you know, Bismillah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khabaith. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. That's it. You go to the left foot, Allah he will send deposit in your, using your PayPal to your account. If you enter with the, with the right foot, you are in trouble. Shaitan will pay with your anus. 
and Allah will not send your reward. So the left foot is very important, brother. This is Islam. So while Jesus was busy making the blind see, the one who cannot walk, walk, healing the leper, walking in water, feeding thousands, making miracles, Muhammad was busy telling Muslims to get inside the bathroom with your left foot. Otherwise, something bad will happen. Foot you went in, you get a reward for that. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tibbidi says he plays with your bowels. Brother, I want you to be honest with us. Before you become a Muslim, how many times shaitan he play with your bows? Because, as you know, you were not entering with the left foot. Can you tell us your honest experience? Did you feel any time, any moment during your time before you became a Muslim that because you did not follow the prophet teaching, shaitan was playing with your bows? I mean, don't tell me that this is me the proof. I mean, you are the one who believe and proves, don't you? You are the one who said, I do not, I want to find the proofs. Believe Christianity. And my one condition yeah. going forward, yeah. when I started to look into Judaism, when I started to look into Hinduism, when I started to look into Buddhism and, and all of the other yeah. isms and, 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 and uh, religions out there, yeah. was I wanted proof. You want proof? This guy is seeking proof. If you find the proof, he will join. That's it. And he found the proof. He found the proof that Shaitan, he played with your anus when you get in. Because he is first-hand witness. And if he is not really shy, he will take a video of it. Bowels. But the hadith of Tibbidi says he plays with your bowels. True. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. And what is killing me, the holy music in the background while the topic is shit. They are playing Quran music in the back. And the topic is what? It's poo, poo I mean, did you hear the background music? Listen carefully. Uh, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tibbidi says he plays with your bowels. He plays with the bowels. So what the heck is this religion is about? I mean, are we like meditating now? This is how you Muslim meditate? You play Islamic, is it, by the way, isn't it music is haram? What is this in the background? And uh, the guy talking about poopoo, -poo, talking about anus, talking about fart, and you play in the background a music about Allah. I mean, there's connection. We have to be honest. It's a perfect match. Well, the shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith. Okay. Well, you know, okay, okay. So if you say this, Shaitan cannot see you. So why Shaitan he was able to deceive Muhammad and throw satanic words in his mouth? Muhammad at that time he did not know this prayer. <laughs> what about Shaitan coming to Muhammad when he was praying and he started to disturb him? Why Muhammad don't say that prayer so Shaitan cannot see him no more? <laughs> This is religion. This is this is amazing religion. You have to face it. You have to admit. Allah protect me from these devils. You you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. You're in the toilet. Shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith. By the way, just to let you know, I'm, these days I got so so wealthy because since long time ago I'm entering the bathroom with my left foot. If I tell you how much money I have, you will not believe it. The left foot, brother make me rich I enter with the left foot I get reward right away I go to my bedroom I flip the pillow I find like and Allah pay by dollars by the way he don't pay like but because he don't like any currency except the Trump currency he's a trumpet 
I got reward for entering with the left foot. Yeah. And I am a person who only follow religion who have approves. Aha. Aha. Right? If you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tibni that says he. Hold on, hold on. This guy, he's saying, idiot. Uh, uh, idiot Christianity has no rule. So this is the rule you have? Is about how to enter the bathroom? This Abdul is upset. So he said to us, where is his text? I approve his text. I don't see it no more. He says, idiot. In Christianity, there's no rules. My friend, thank God we don't have a stupid rules like yours. This is rules? So if you're God, he will not protect your anus unless you say his name. You just mean that your anus and the God name is in connect. I mean, look what you just did. You put the name of Allah in the top of your anus to protect your anus. Because this is what the whole topic is about. Your anus is under the conspiracy of shaitan. How you protect your anus? By saying Allah. You say Allah, your anus is a blood for shaitan, brother. So the word Allah became the, the security of the anus. Do you see how much Muslims they respect their God? I mean, do you have a brain? Do you ever use this brain? Isn't it an insult to anyone have a religion to believe in such a stupid thing? So in order to protect my anus, I have to say Allah. And if you don't say Allah, Shaitan, he will have an access to your anus. And what he will find there? Why Shaitan is playing with your balls? Tell me please, brother, why? What exactly Shaitan trying to do? And why the shaitan is focusing in your anus? Do you have a special anus? And why this anus targeting happen only to Muslims? This religion is a religion of conspiracy. Everything against Muslims. If they see, they have a phobia, they have phobia from everything. If they have a so pork, uh, pork, 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 cross, uh, cross, cross, uh, uh, alcohol, alcohol, uh, uh, shaitan, uh, shaitan, shaitan, uh, shaitan. Uh, you know, he, he have intercourse, he did not say that. And by the way, I remember an Eid Muslim. Actually, this is the, the first Eid is Muhammad. When Muhammad is said, there's a prayer if you don't say, Shaitan he round himself. If, if the admin can post the link for this in English, so people can read it. Shaitan he will round himself around your penis if you don't say this prayer. Once a Muslim he come to a chat room and he keep insulting the Christians, saying to them, "Christians, you are the sons of the devil. You are the sons of the devil." The Prophet he said that uh, if you don't say this prayer, Shaitan he will round himself and he will do your mother, which means you are born from Shaitan. So the admin says to me, I don't know what to say to this guy. Can you just, I was just sitting, listen, I'm not even talking, you know. I said, come on, leave me alone, man. <laughs> he said, just take the microphone. I know you can say something nobody can say. Just take the microphone. So I took the microphone. I said, Abdul, are you sure that this hadith is authentic? He said, yes, 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 it's authentic. I said, are you sure it's authentic? He said, what's wrong with you, Kastan Brands? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I told you it's authentic. You are son of Shaitan. So I said, are you sure that this is very authentic? He said, Christian Prince, you are so stupid. I just told you already three times. It is authentic. I said, wonderful. As long as you agree that this is authentic hadith, that if you don't say certain words before you have intercourse with your wife, Shaitan will round himself around your penis and will do your wife. Have you agreed that is true? Therefore, Muhammad himself is son of Shaitan. Because Muhammad, he was not a believer in Allah and he did not recite that words. Therefore, Muhammad himself was a result of the boom boom of Shaitan. You should see the Abdul. He took the microphone. I mean, I'll curse you. May the train go over you. May I send you a card and hit you. May I look at your neck. What the heck? Because I, you are so smart like Shaitan. <laughs> what the heck? I'm so smart like Shaitan. Your prophet is so stupid like stupid.
Do even Muhammad he think before he say because if shaitan will do your wife before you say that words and Muhammad father was not a believer that's mean the one who did the mother of Muhammad was shaitan so those people repeating this hadith for 14 centuries they did not find one one person in the world to say to them you stupid that's mean your prophet is son of shaitan too this is how dummy they are and then they accuse me that I'm smart like shaitan well, I prefer to be smart like shaitan, not to be stupid like Allah. What a stupid religion, man. Tell us more. He plays with your bowels. Uh -huh. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. No. This guy, he found the proofs in Islam. And you know those people, by the way, they are useless. They have no jobs. They do nothing. They convert to Islam and then the Muslim, they make them superstars. They invite them to conferences. They buy them tickets to, to England, to Australia, to Saudi Arabia. They became like, you know, stars for what? Because he found in Islam proofs. He found that the only prophet who come with the proofs is Muhammad, who he said that your penis will be endless. You know, I found that really a clear proof in the Quran, like when Allah he said that Suleiman he have a afrit. I found the afrit in a movie, Egyptian movie. And brother, this afrit brother, he is so fast brother. I mean, all of us, we used to laugh at the cartoon and the genie movies. And the second we say genie people, they laugh, they know it's fictions, but they do not know that this is in the heart of Islam. When the bird, his name is al Hudhud, he went and he found a woman, she have no hair in her legs, which is amazing at that time. Because in the time of my grandmother, all Middle Eastern women, they were like a gorilla, including my grandmother, Alhamdulillah. So Suleiman, when his bird al hudhud he went and he found a female, she have no hair in her legs, which is astonishing, I'm telling you. I mean, at that time, you will pay a, a, like unlimited number of dollars to find a woman to marry and she have no hair in her legs. They are very hairy. Even Harry Potter, the name of the movie is coming from the legs of the woman at that time. That's why it's called Harry Potter. Why? Because there was a lot of hair and they butter it. You know, it's too heavy, they carry it. Like the Potter, the one who carry things for you, Harry Potter. This is where the name coming from. So, this guy he found proofs why because the quran is the book of a proof there's a prophet his name is solomon he have an army of genie and chicken and mankind and they march for him dum, 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 dum. Bop, bop, bop. That's amazing. He found the proof there. And before Solomon, they were marched his host of jinn and men and birds. My friend, a Muslim, he's so angry. He says, Christian Prince is a cheap comedy. You can call me whatever names you are talking about, but the truth is the comedy is your God. There's a king, he is a prophet of God, and his army included chickens. And my comedy is a cheap. Well, guess what? People are laughing at what your God said, not what I said. You are just an idiot who believe in such a garbage. And the funny is, as long you are saying cheap comedy, I will tell you a joke.
and I hope I will not hurt your feeling. What do you think that I am a prophet, and if you believe in me, I will give you a woman her ass is one mile. Is that cheap? What do you think about one mile ass? Be honest with me. Is that a cheap promise? Do you like one mile ass? What's your name? What's your name? Fact? Be honest with me. It's not personal. It's fact. Is it a fact that Allah will give you a woman her ass is one mile? And what you would do with such an ass? May Allah ask you. I mean, why Allah stop with one mile? What about make it 72 mile? I mean, all of us, we like big screen TV. And if your wife ass is one mile, how then your penis is endless? I mean, because the ass is still small. So you have endless miles for penis and your wife ass is one mile. Don't you think this is very cheap promise? Abdul, are you there? He is not there right now. He played dead. When I ignore him again, he will, he will post something in the text. The second you mention their names, they play dead. You are out of Islam? Okay, the one, the one, uh, what's his name? The one got away. Okay, good for you, my friend. I'm happy for you. But I have a bad news for you in the same time. Guys, he got out of Islam. I don't know what to say to him, happy for you or sad for you. Because look what happened. Now your penis will not be endless. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, that size does matter. You know that there's nobody can promise you such a true promise like Allah. I'm sorry. Now you will not have opportunity to have women with big boobs. The only God who promised his followers with big boobs. And by the way, he did not say women. The word women is not there. You see, in translation it says women. In the verse in Arabic, never say the word women, which means you will receive big boobs by themselves. To make it simple for you, you will not have a woman. You will have this. Excuse me, ladies. It is science time. You will have this. Hold on. We need to use different color. You will have two boobs. What is the woman? Brother, Allah is amazing. Those are boobs will be flying around you. Like you go to your bedroom, you look around you, you see boobs, like big boobs, like boing, 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 boing. And the benefit of those boobs, you can play karaoke with them. They're huge. You can do boxing with them. You can jump on them. You can bounce on them. You can jump from the sixth floor and nothing will happen to you if you hold into them. And if tsunami come and you live next to the beach, you can hold the nipples and you will float in the top of the ocean. As you see, Allah, he planned for everything just by the word boobs. Who can beat that? Only Allah, he have a proof of his existence, the booby God. Every believer will receive big boobs. Oh, hold on. Listen, Prince. I'm going to get you both it. Second, like, how in the world you call me without the phone ringing? Listen, Prince. I'm making your phone. You, you, you didn't have my phone, but I don't have a line. Listen, Prince. I do not need a line to have your phone. Okay, but uh, why are you so excited? Why are you so angry? First of all, I told you one more time. Don't draw boobs in the screen. Why? Why is that? It's haram. 
why it's haram? Because the woman did haram. But Allah, he draw himself, he says boobs. The second Allah, he says boobs, it's mean he's drawing a drawing by words. He do not need to use a pen to draw it. He just said boobs and he said big, so we know how they look like. Question Prince. Allah, he don't use pen. Ah, Jack and Naik. Is it Allah, he says, the first thing he created was a pen? Exactly. But you just said Allah don't draw by the pen. Allah, he created the pen to write with it, not to draw with it. Ah. Okay, Zakah, Zakah, Zakura. Listen, why Allah He promised me big boobs? What if I like small ones? <laughs> the other thing a man in the world, he believed that he liked to have the debate with a boob. I'm example, I have a wife, and I like them all to have big boobs. My third wife, she don't have big boobs. I send her to bed every time. And then they did the third video with her. It says, Zakah, Naik, I don't know what you're saying. What? Your third wife, what? My third wife, she don't have a big boobs. So I send her to Thailand, and she made the surgery. You send your wife to, to Thailand to have a surgery for her boobs? Why? I don't know, because she has a small boobs. And Alhamdulillah, when she go to the heaven, she will have big boobs with her dinner of the gato. Zakarnak, are we going to have women in heaven or cows? What is that, man? Christian Prince, you are the last, and the Quran said they with the Christian to make you disbelieve because they are the last. Ah, we are jealous. Well, we can convert to Islam by saying a shahada and get you what you get. This is how easy it is. This is true. So when you say it, well, I want to convert to Islam, but the big boobs are scaring the hell off me. I mean, don't you think that this is really scary? By the way, Zach and I, if your wife ass is one mile, what about you take me in this coming weekend to do picnic to hike in the top of your wife ass? Is it so smooth as Allah said? Zakir? Zakir? Oops. Look like Zakir, he got upset and he ran away. Do you know that Allah, he spent 1,000 years to smooth the skin of Muslim women in heaven? Or the virgins? I mean, this God, he never heard of something called Vaseline. And why you need to smooth the skin for 1,000 years? Isn't it you, Allah, who say B is going to be? So the poor Allah, he take them to the shop, he start, you know, sanding them. He will make them smooth. 1,000 years will take it for each woman. Do you see how fast Allah is? <laughs> I'm about to show how he was aboard. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, Sheikh Ahmad, he made a, a new video. Where is this video? Hold on. He made a new video. Let us see. Yeah, hold on. Here we go. This is a new video. By, by the way, guys, don't forget to subscribe to uh, you, uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmad. Sheikh Ahmad, sorry. He's an ex-Muslim. And he has very great skills in editing. He is really hilarious. So this is the last video he just made about the black seed, which is a cure for every disease. So he, you know, his prophet always, as usual, he make a lot of poo, poo and his poo, poo is so big to defend. But the poor Abdul, he have defended. I mean, he have to defend the poo, poo because simply this is a product he sell in the beginning of every video. If you watch his videos, you will see him posting something in front of your face saying, buy this one, don't forget to buy this one. Uh, what is that? Tell us what is that, Mimi. A contention which some people, anti-Islamic apologists have used <coughs> and even it's in, on some of their websites about a hadith uh, which talks about the black seed and if you wanted to translate it literalistically it would read that it's a cure for every disease but uh, hold on hold on if you want to if you want to translate it really this is key what 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 is that are you saying this is not what it is <laughs> i mean the defense is so silly and so stupid if you want to translate it if you want is it, is, it, is it a choice to translate how it is, or we have to translate as it is? Mm. <clears throat> tell us more, tell us more. But is this the case? How could it be the case? I mean, is there a cure for cancer, for AIDS, for all of those things? Uh, uh, Mimi, is it a call for uh, breastfeeding for adults? 
<laughs> Tell us more about this medicine, man. Do we not need hospitals anymore? No way. C cancer research needs to shut down because now we have the black seed. No, the hadith does not mean. Uh, it does not mean. The hadith does not mean. Let us see what the hadith say, in potato guys. The hadith does not mean. What the heck? So why it's saying that it is a medicine for every, 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 every single disease. The hadith does not mean, so why your prophet, he says, the remedy for every disease except death. I mean, how clear he can make it, he just make an exception, death is not there. Do you see the stupidity of those people trying to defend their stupid prophet? Brother and sister. The hadith does not mean that. It says, Negla seed is remedy for every disease except death. And the potato trying to defend his prophet, because by the way, he's not defending his prophet, he's defending his product because this is what he is selling for the poor, the poor Muslims. Every video he goes, he says, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, brother, sister, buy this, buy this, if you want to be healthy, buy this, brother, sister, yeah. Do you see how much corrupt those people are they are willing to lie about something is so clear like the sun a remedy for every disease not some disease does it say the word some like you can't your prophet use the word some but you're a prophet he chose to say for every disease except death and here we ask ourselves is even death and a disease you stupid idiot muhammad because how you say except death when you are talking about disease is is the, is is death is a disease i don't know i feel like i have to i need to eat i need to add this to the commercial break of a christian prince commercial break Hello, babies. if you have a problem what is your disease what is your situation what is your illness are you infected by co corona Take the negla seed of cancer. Take the negla seed. You can't have babies. Take the negla seed. You have a mental illness. Take the negla seed. You have a problem with uh, you know, functioning. Your hands are shaking. Your heart is not working. Take the negla seed. Order now! If you would like to order a necklace Z, please go to Patreon and order. www.patreon.com slash Christian Prince. We have a limited stock. Please don't miss out. Approved by Prophet Muhammad. This guy is something. Don't don't forget to subscribe to his channel. By the way, he's very good in video editing and he is very funny. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I said it's an idea to add this to my commercial break, and he did add it. <laughs> and did you see the lighting? Did you did you see the neon lighting? Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you have a problem, what is your disease? What is your situation? What is your illness? Are you infected by co corona? Take the negla seed of cancer. Take the negla seed. You can't have babies. Take the negla seed. You have a mental illness. Take the negla seed. You have a problem with uh, you know, functioning. Your hands are shaking. Your heart is not working. Take the negla seed. Order now! If you would like to order a necklace Z, please go to Patreon and order. www.patreon.com slash Christian Prince. <laughs> the necklace seed. It have a, it solve all your problems. <laughs> And 
the funny uh, hijabi said if you translate in the realistically it says that if you translate really so should we translate not realistically should we trace fakely I and mean, what is that man how those people they get their answers where they get their answers from they get their answers from the pharmacy of the prophet and you see muhammad he did not say that this this uh, uh, seed will help you with diseases uh, you know all seed in the world by the way any seeds have a benefit it doesn't matter what it is there's not a single thing we eat is not does not that's why why we eat it then we eat simply those things whatever we eat we eat it because it have a benefit for our body our body needs supplement as simple as that so there's tons of things can help but Muhammad he did not say those things help it, he said it is Shifa Shifa mean a cure Shifa mean a cure even the word remedy is not too accurate because he said Shifa Shifa on mean kullida. So based on this, no Muslim should go a doctor to go a doctor, and the pharmacy should not have any medication except the nagla seed. And that's it. And if you search where the seed is coming from, the origin, you will find that you know. Muhammad is taking what he heard from Salman al Farisi and he added to his religion. Everything this man he say, he took it from somebody. And you will notice uh, how Muhammad he changed his medicine. Sometime the medicine for all diseases is honey. Sometimes the medicine of all diseases is camel urine. Sometimes the medicine of all diseases is the Najda seed. Sometimes the specific medicine for black magic and poison is Ajwa. And what make it more funny, Muhammad he was infected with both according to Muslims. He was under black magic. And he was killed by poison. So based on Muhammad is, you know, is speaking, or, or what he's saying, that if you take seven ajwa, no poison can kill you, and no black magic can happen to you. But both things happen to him, according to Muslims. A Muslim might say to you, well, the Bible says that no poison can kill you if you believe in Jesus. The poison here, obviously, is not about poison we drink. Because Jesus himself, as our belief, he was killed. So why we will not be killed if Jesus himself was killed? All the disciples of Jesus were killed. Correct? So if nothing can kill them, no, nothing can kill them then. So why are they being killed? So for us, obviously, we have different meaning for this. For them, this is literally, it's something you eat. Ajwa is not a metaphorical. It is a food you eat. And if you eat the seven Ajwa, and you have to be seven. If you do six, it doesn't work. Sorry. Eight will not work. It has to be seven. Be careful. And then we we'll find that Muhammad himself, he died by poison. And he was dying slowly. So why the seven ajwa did not help him? This person, he eats seven ajwa every day in the morning. And then he died by poison. Right? I answer you, Mr. Harun. I answer already. The answer is there in the same chapter, actually. The poison of this earth is the poison of Jesus, he said, don't fear the one who destroy your flesh, but the one who destroy your spirit, your soul. Correct, Christians? So, and Jesus said, time will come and people will think by killing you, they are doing favor to God. 
So Jesus, he told us that we will be killed. He did not say nobody will kill you. He said the opposite. He said you will be killed. Time will come and people will think by killing you, they are doing favor to God. Here, this is not metaphorical. This is literally, as you see, Muhammad died by poison. This is not a metaphorical story. And he claimed that if you eat seven ajwa, poison will not kill you. And why Muhammad, he said, eat seven ajwa? Because he was eating seven ajwa every day. But then Muhammad, he got himself busted because how the seven ajwa will stop black magic and then we find that he was under the black magic. Right? Uh, somebody saying uh, this, you know, I I uh, I like uh, I like uh, questions, but obviously people who ask questions they don't think. I find always I'm not trying to insult. I found that people who ask questions, supposedly questioning Christianity, they are immature people, and I will prove it to you in a second. Look at this, proud saying. Also, how come you say Muhammad and Islam committed crimes while Christians killed Jews, pagans? native in the world in the new world this is very foolish of you because if i am a christian and i take a gun right now and i sell drugs does not make me christian that make me christian by name so you are being silly and stupid if you want to judge christianity you judge it by jesus if you want to judge islam you judge it by muhammad jesus never owned a slave jesus never killed anyone Je jesus never took the money of somebody Muhammad, he bring people, he beat them until they tell him where they hide their money. Muhammad, he raped their wives. Muhammad, he have sex with his children. Muhammad, he kidnapped people. Muhammad, he asked for ransom like ISIS. Muhammad, he cut trees. Muhammad, he burned houses. Muhammad, even he did the graves of people so he can find their gold and silver. So it's very silly of you to say what you are saying. Secondly, when you say that the Christian committed the crimes and they killed, they killed who? Why the Christian killed Jews? Well, the Jews, they killed the Christian too. Just to show you how stupid you are and you are ignorant. This is the story from the Quran about a king, his name Abu Nawas. The Jews in this story, they burned the Christians alive. And this is about the invasion of the Jews to Yemen when they killed the Christians in Yemen by burning them alive. Do you see the story? So you are an ignorant, you are a dummy, and you are a stupid. The Jews, there's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the Roman. The Roman, they were defeated at that time. And why they were defeated? The Jews, they side with them inside Jerusalem, so which means they betray the Christians inside Jerusalem. Joining the Persian forces, so when the Romans get victorious, they kicked out of the Jews. This is what happened. This is history. So you are very silly and you are very naive. And this is exactly what the Jews happened to do. And they helped the Muslims in Spain invasion. So when the Spanish, they took over again, they kicked away the Jews. This is why you see a lot of Jews in Morocco, not because they are friends, but because they are friends with benefit. So my friend, ignorance speak. And people when they speak with stupidity, they speak with their ignorance. In the top of that, when we say Christianity, we say Jesus. When we say Islam, we say Muhammad. I don't judge Islam by a Muslim. I judge Islam by, by Muhammad. Did Muhammad say I was victorious by terror? Yes. Jesus in the cross, he says, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing to who? To the Jews. Muhammad he says, if I am victorious, I will kill every single Christian, every single Jew. And I will cleanse the Arabian Peninsula from them. I hope you enjoy the shower I just gave you with your ignorance. This is Muhammad saying, certainly I will expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. And just to show you how stupid you are again, isn't it the Christians who is the one who protected the Jews from Hitler? How come you remember that the Jews killed by a Christian, but you don't remember that Jews protected by Christians too? Because you are a dummy. And because you are a hypocrite. 
While the Muslims they join the Hitler army to kill the Jews, the Christians they send millions of their kids to defend the Jews. This is the truth. But for you, because you are a hypocrite, the one who killed the Jews is the Christians, not the one who defend the Jews. Dummy. Didn't Jesus support slavery like Muhammad? Will you have to prove it, my friend? No, he did not support slavery. If you want to pause for me from the Old Testament, that's because you are a fool again. The Jews themselves, they've been enslaved. The whole nation being enslaved. So what the Jews were having is a war with enemies from all around them. Either we slave you or you slave us. So they've been forced to. When you see the whole nation of the Jews being taken as slaves to Egypt, not one, not two, not a three, not a hundred, not a thousand. They took the whole country. They took them like goats. He took the whole country as a slaves. So why do you want the Jews not to have slaves? You know, I just are being stupid. Now the Vatican helped the Nazi. The Vatican, it can be, it can be possible that they helped the Nazi. But what does it have to do with Jesus? You're a stupid son of Muta. What does it have to do with Jesus? We just said, I can be Christian. Let us say I am the Pope. Let us say I'm a bishop. Let us say I'm a priest. But in the same time, I'm like Muhammad. And that will make me a child molester. Like Muhammad. What does this have to do with Jesus? You're a stupid idiot. So you remember from the Pope only the one you don't like, and you don't remember the other Pope? Only one Pope is bad for you, and that makes all the Christians bad. Idiot hypocrisy. See, here you see that people who they are desperate to find something against Christianity, they fail because they can find something against Christianity by speaking about Christians, but they cannot find something against Christianity by speaking about Jesus. When he mentioned that Jesus approved of slavery, why did Jesus own slaves? Which one was his slave? How many? Did Paul have slaves? Did Peter have slaves? Did John have slaves? Did any of the disciples have slaves? Which one of them killed somebody? Who killed somebody? When Peter, he took his sword to defend Jesus, Jesus, he told him, put your sword down. The one who lived by the sword, he died by the sword. That is Jesus. But because you are a desperate hypocrite, you try to judge Jesus by me. I, who said I am like Jesus? I'm not. I'm not, and I will never be. This is why we need the Savior. Because if we are good, we do not need Jesus. If we are that good, he do not need even to come. Jesus, he came to save us because we are not good, not the opposite. Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So you don't want to remember that every human being is sick. You want to remember that the sick, if somebody is a Christian and he is sick, that will make Jesus sick. That because you are a hypocrite. But here we have a Muslim. His name is Muhammad. He is the he is the best of Islam and he is a child molester. So if there is a bishop, is a child molester, well, he is not Christian for sure. Because Jesus said, it's better for you, those who hurt the little one, to put a milestone in their neck and throw themselves in the deep ocean before they do that. So when Muhammad, he had sex with six years old. Jesus saying to him, it's better for you to put a milestone in your neck and throw yourself in the deep ocean. But can we say that Muhammad is not a person he presents Islam? No, he is the founder of Islam. When Muhammad, he kidnapped, when Muhammad, he raped, when Muhammad, he tortured, when Muhammad, he put even nails in the eyes of people. When they are alive, he hid the nails with fire and he put them in the eyes. Can we say that Muhammad does not present Islam and he is not a good Muslim? Like you see today, there's many articles saying ISIS is not Islam. Name for me one thing ISIS did, Muhammad did not do. <laughs> Just name one. Muhammad, he, 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 he cut a woman alive between two camels. She is over, the, over 85 years old. He tied her legs to two camels and he ordered the camels to go in two different directions. That's Muhammad.
Shall we say that Muhammad does not present Islam? While Jesus was forgiving the Jews in the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. So Christians today cannot say, oh, we are going to seek revenge from the Jews because they killed Jesus. You cannot say that because Jesus already, he says, forgive them, Father. Most of the hadith are fabricated. This is, look at the stupidity, guys. Most of the hadith is fabricated. In, in the front of our eyes, it says Sahih. And then the Abdul, he scratched his bum. And he come with the excuse that most of the hadith is a lie. <laughs> Look at the stupidity. I mean, it's in the front of us, it says sahih, which means authentic. So the Muslims, in the chat, it's not authentic. In their website, it's authentic. Can you believe it? <laughs> what about the Quran then? And you know, the, and this is actually additional proof that Islam is false. Because how we can believe in such a garbage? If the Muslim they say to us that we Muslim we lie about our Prophet, so we Muslims we make books about Muhammad and we lie about our Prophet, and then we not only we lie, we write next to it authentic. But by the way, it's not authentic. We are trying to lie to you. Do you see the stupidity? And the funny, they say Islam is protected religion by Allah. The information about Islam is protected, but Islam is based on the Hadith and the Quran. So if you are saying to me the Hadith is not protected, that's when Islam is not. Did we have a good time? Don't forget to download the video, share it with your friends. Otherwise, uh, the peaceful Muhammad, he will put nails in your eyes. And he will cut your hands and your feet. When you see ISIS in TV crucifying somebody, cutting his hands and his feet and putting nails in his eyes, this is from the Quran. And from the Hadith. Crucifying is an act of pagan. Muhammad, he adopt his God, he adopt the crucifixion of the Roman. Do you see it? Oh, this is a weak hadith. This is a Quran. Yes, it's weak hadith. Mm -hmm. It's a Quran. It's a weak hadith. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Allah is weak. The Arab, they keep saying to Muhammad, give us a sign, give us a miracle. And Muhammad, he keeps saying to them, Allah told me, we refrain from sending miracle. Like, what the heck? Allah, he refrain from sending miracles? Yes, because he is weak. He refrain. Jesus do not refrain. Jesus can miracle because he is a miracle. He is the living miracle. So my friend, all those people who try to put Christianity down by speaking about us as a Christians, and that supposedly will make Jesus go down. They fail because Jesus is what we judge with, not me. If I was so good, I will not even need to follow Jesus then. I will follow myself because I'm so good then. So your failure and your stupidity and your hatred to Christianity fail. And you know what the Bible says? Love never fail. That is the truth. That is the success with Jesus. Your hate is killing you. You are dying because of your hate. You see, when the ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all the terrorists, they teach hate against Christianity, Christianity flourish more, actually, not the opposite. Islam is dying. They say to you, we are growing by number. Go and see. Go and see how many they are leaving Islam. Go and see in the Middle East how many people they spit at Islam every day. They wish their land is out of Islam. They have a misery. Go and see the airport, the embassies. Everybody is flying away from Islam. 
And the only country who flourish is the countries who do not practice Islam. Go to Emirat. Why Emirat is a flourishing? Because have zero Islam. Zero. You know what zero mean? Zero. Oil could not make them flourish. Could make them rich, but still they are down. This is why the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia trying to kill Islam slowly. Now they have a bikini beach in Saudi Arabia. Now they have a tourist. Now women, they can come without hijab to Saudi Arabia. Now people, they can watch TV and play music in the street. Now in Saudi Arabia, there's a theater and movies. So the Crown Prince, he himself, he knew we cannot flourish and live if Islam still exists. So he is killing Islam slowly. And this is the truth. They have night party now in Saudi Arabia. They are inviting singers from around the world to Saudi Arabia. Why? It's clear. We don't want Islam, but they don't dare to say it publicly. They do it slowly. So in 15, 20 years from now, Saudi Arabia is going to be the same as Emirat, where women swim in the bikini in the beach. Actually, already they have the bikini beach. People, they can go and draw, you know, drink alcohol and they have night bars. And even they have gay bars. Well, Idi, my friend, I'm sorry for your loss. May the Lord bless her heart. What we can say. And, you know, about people they lose, like our friend here, Idi, he lost his wife in 9-11. You know, remember one thing, that death is coming to us no matter what. How we die, it's not going to change anything. Death happens so fast. And I am the last one who really fear death. I don't care really if I die a second from now or a century from now. I will care for my death if I am not doing what I should do. If I'm a person who will go to meet my Lord, and I did not bring a single person to him, I changed his life. Because the Lord will ask me, you spend 60, 70, 80 years of your life doing what? What I will say to him, I have a bank account, I have a car, house, land. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So we as a believer, we shall not fear death. Never fear death, by the way. And this is the secret of happiness. Because those who fear death, they will never be happy. They have a phobia of death. A person who has a phobia from germs, he is dead already. Because whatever he touches, he has to wash his hand. And he, and he, because he, he doesn't have life. He's afraid. He's, he's all torturing himself. He cannot enjoy breathing. Your fear is your death. With Jesus, we have no fear. We overcome death. Even bad days for us is good days. For that sometime will make us wake up and remember our Lord. Because sadly, most of us, we forget the Lord when we are healthy. We forget the Lord when we are wealthy. We forget the Lord when we have no needs. The second we have needs, we say, Lord, please help me with my health. Please, Lord, let me have some money. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, let me send my son to school. Please. So we remember the Lord that he is just a bank accounter or a, med a medical doctor. Beyond that, we don't remember him. That because a human being is selfish. So if you cannot remember the Lord when you do not need, then you are not a person worthy to the Lord. Those who belong to the Lord is those who pray to him when they have no needs. Which is impossible, by the way. But still, I can now, I am healthy, thank the Lord. I have no pain, thank you, Lord. I have food in my table, thank you, Lord. So I can say, I have those needs, I have them already. But I pray to you and I say thank you. Those who don't appreciate what they have is going to be taken from them. As simple as that. Right? So 
you know everyone everyone when he want uh, he remember like you know you have a son uh, he, he left the house 20 years ago and Jesus spoke about those parables in the Bible so he left your house 20 years ago and then he called you one day says that I want money I need your help uh, you know suddenly he remember you why because he needs something when he do not need you he don't remember you so don't be like those people <clears throat> anyway somebody saying that in uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 6 uh, sometime atheists they speak about that okay well you see uh, Christianity when when, uh, when 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 the Christians saying to the Christians obey your masters but as you see the Christian themselves are the slaves <laughs> so the message here is don't be a rebellion and don't kill when you serve serve with decency don't be a hypocrite don't be a, a criminal don't be a bad person even if he slave you so how the atheists they can use that against us when we are the slaves In the same time, you will see the same verse saying, you slaves serve and you, you masters be good to your servants. And remember that there's one judge, he will judge you all. This is what the verse is saying. So people, they say whatever they want. Christianity is against violence. It's not a secret. But we remember at the same time that John the Baptist, he said no to a king. He was obedient to the king, but not by his mouth. When it's come to the truth. So serving the king, even if he is a bad person, we will serve. We will not cause shed, bloodshed. Let us say, I don't like Joe Biden, so what I shall do? Shall I go and kill? Shall I go and shoot those who don't agree with me? No, we as a Christian, we should not do that. We will not go against the law just to be against the law. But in the same time, we will oppose the law if it is against God teaching, which means we will not accept it. But we will not go and kill because of it. So John the Baptist, he went to the king. He said to him, this woman, she is not lawful for you. But as you see, the Bible teach that you should obey. You obey the king. You obey your master. You obey your leader. Don't be a rebellion. But in the same time, we see that the best the Bible speak of is John the Baptist. He stood against a person who was doing something unlawful. So a true Christian, he serve. This is physical serve. With decency. But at the same time, they will not lose decency by obeying something is not decent. So if I was a slave at that time and my master says to me, cook food, I'm not going to spit in it. I can spit in the dish behind the scene of the master. You can do that. You can put poison in it. You can kill your master. But that will not be a Christ-like. So people, they can say whatever they want. But as you see here, this is about teaching mercy and love. Not about being violent and criminal. Imagine if the verse saying, Oh, you slaves, kill your masters. How many life will be killed from the slaves and from the masters? And slavery will not be ended. And actually, slavery until now is exist, literally. In the West, slavery have different form. There is somebody, his name is Alan Musk, whatever his name. He owned trillions of dollars. There's people who own a budget of countries. 
And there's people they work for seven dollars an hour standing all day long behind a cashier machine. In old days, slave, he lived in the house of the master. These days you live in your house. In the old days, the slave, the master, he feed him. Today you go feed yourself. <laughs> Slavery never changed. Slavery is still there. If you go and read in the Old Testament, you will see that a person, he go to his master and he, 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 he offer himself to go be a slave for the maximum of seven years. Why? Because people, they live in poverty. Even some of them, they offer their family, me and my family, my, my sons, my daughters, all of us, we will be your slaves because people, they are desperate. They don't have even food. Slavery never ended and will never end. It's just to change the name and the form. When you see the person, this guy with his name, the poor guy, George Floyd, he was killed by the police for the sake of $20, right? After he died, they made a statues for him from gold. They made a coffin from gold. They are writing books about him, and now they have a movie where the money was when the guy was alive. When was this interest in a poor man when the guy was alive? Do you see the hypocrisy of this world? It's a political agenda. Slavery is a still exist. There's a person, he cannot find money to feed his kids. And there's a person, he do not know what to do with the money he own. He want to go to the sky. He want to go for a trip for the space, for fun in the weekend. Will cost him $130 million for two hours in the space. And there's a person, he don't know how to pay for his heat. That is a slavery. Go to the Philippines and see people sleeping inside the, car, the, 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 the damaged car tires. I saw that with my own eyes. See children sleeping in the street. See child abuse. See pedophiles. Go around the world and see what's happening. Human trafficking, sex slaves. So people are really hypocrite. They go and say, look what the Bible says. But they don't look at their life today and what they are doing to each other. Jesus said, love your enemy. If somebody asks you for your coat, give him your address. If somebody asks you to walk a step, walk a thousand with him. He said to them, I was hungry and you feeded me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in jail, in prison, and you came to me. I was a stranger and you took me in. They said to him, Lord, when we did that to you? He said, when you did it to my brothers, you did it to me. That is Jesus. But because you are a hypocrite, trying to find an excuse, you will go and you will look in the shelves to see maybe we can find something against Christianity. If Christianity is religion or belief promoting slavery, then the one who wrote the letter should have slaves too. Correct? The one who wrote the letter to Ephesians, should, do, do he have slaves? How many slaves he have? How many slaves Paul he have? <laughs> you see the stupidity? Because if they really promote slavery, they are exist in a society approved slavery. So they are dealing with situation. They are not creating slavery. What you can say to the dummy? You are a dummy. If you do that, you give them certification. Right? And for me, an atheist, he is the last one who can tell me about ethic. Why? Because every single ethic the atheist they have is coming from a Christianity. When an atheist he says, I'm married, well, what marriage is in, athe in atheism? Marriage is a form, is a religious form. Because an atheist, what marriage for him? What does that mean? What will stop an atheist from having sex with his mother? Nothing. Do you have a book that says it's not lawful for you? It is an ethical book saying that. What what he what religion he follow? What exactly the religion which says you can't have sex with your mother, or with your daughter, or with your sister? So those atheists, you ask them, you will have sex with your mother? You say, no, I'm not going to do that. Why do you say that? You get insulted. Well, that's mean you are following Christianity still. 
Otherwise, you're an atheist. Atheists have no freedom from everything. Is it free? Don't you call yourself liberal? What liberal mean? Liberated. Liberated from what? From all rules. So they claim to be liberated, but in fact, they don't want to be liberated. They are hypocrite. Anyway. <clears throat> People, they say as they wish, but the Christ is not what they say. And for the last 2,000 years, Christ, he took a lot of accusation. But Jesus, he said, 2,000 years of before, he said, who of you can prove me to be a sinner? And all of them fail. For this is what count. Your opinion is just an opinion of a silly hypocrite person. <clears throat> uh, just to show you an example here, of a, of, a, of a stupid comment. Hold on. Just to show you an example. Here you see how Muslims, they are ignorant in their religion and they do not know even what they are talking about. Thank you for posting your comment. Read with me and love. Christianity says that the prophet Lot had sex with his daughters and got them pregnant. A prophet of God, clear corruption. This is how stupid you are. Let us go to the Quran. You are a donkey like your prophet. According to the Quran, the wives of Lot and the, the wives of Noah both are prostitutes. Which means his daughters are not his daughters. According to the Quran. <laughs> Are you there? So look how stupid you are. According to your Quran, the two prophets, Lot and Noah, their wives are a whore. It says here in Arabic, They betray them. They did what? They betray them. Okay. So the two wives are a bunch of whore. If we go to the Bible, we will find that the daughters of Lot, they were not bad people. They thought they will never see a man again because their father took them far away from everybody. So they said to themselves, how we can have children? So look what they did. Lot, he was drunken by the daughters and they had sex with him, which means it was not his will. So where the Christianity teaching there? The, the Bible is teaching us what happened. It's not God said to them, go sleep with your father. It's not God said to them, go and make your father drunk. So you are a stupid fool like your prophet who make a poopoo, and the poopoo is bigger than the head of your prophet. However, look what you did now. According to the Quran, the wives of Lot are a hooker. And the wife of Noah is a hooker too. All right. But... If we look in the different verse in the Quran, it says that the good women will marry good men and the bad women will marry bad men. <laughs> so if the two wives of the two prophets, as you call them, by the way, Lot is not a prophet for us. That is very stupid of you to say, but we will go with you, no problem. When the Quran says that Allah will make bad women marry bad men, and good women marry good women, good men. Let us compare. Allah said, pure women to pure men. By the way, translation is funny. It's not really pure, impure. And impure of for, uh, for women, impure for men of impurity. I mean, let me change the translation. This is really horrible. This guy is using Google translation for sure. Read and love. Bad, state, bad statement, bad women became bad statement. Look at this. The women, she became a statement now. Between two brackets or bad women for bad men. <laughs> so, okay, let, let me make it simple. The verse saying bad men for bad women and good women, they marry good men. Okay, we go to the other verse. Chapter 66, verse number 10. As long the two women are hookers, that means the two men, the prophet of Islam, they are hookers. Because the Quran says bad women, they marry bad men. Are you there, Abdul? Look at the answer. Allah will judge between us. <laughs> you see the answer? <laughs> this is the answer. Ho, 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 ho. 
case Allah will judge between us. I want your answer. You made a topic. This is the answer. Allah will judge between us. Already he did. He says bad women for bad men. Allah will judge between us. Are you wearing a tight jeans going in your ass? Because this is not an answer of a man. Okay, Christian Prince, Allah will judge between us, okay? Next time if I see you, I will beat you with my sandal, okay? Potato. You are the one who opened the story about Lot. Now you got your prophet busted. Based on what your prophet said, bad women, they marry only bad men. So if the wife of Lot and the wife of Noah, they are hookers, that means Noah and Lot are hookers. And you are the one who said, corruption, corruption, the daughter of the prophet, they have sex with their father. <laughs> Potato, and they say to me, "Why I say the word potato? The word potato you don't deserve it, by the way. Today I ate potato. It's very delicious. What a dummy religion! And you know what? If if bad women, if this is the rule of Allah, that He will make only bad women marry bad men. So why there's good men they have a bad women or vice versa? Do you see the stupid here? If Allah, he made a judgment that he will make bad women marry bad men. Only. And good men marry good women. <laughs> this is additional proof that the one who made the Quran is taking hashish. He is high with hashish. By the way, even the word hashish is coming from Muslims. Do you know the story of Hassan al-Hashash? The mountain of Hashashin? The mountain of Hashish? The Ismaili sect? Now, their leader, the grandsons of this guy, he live in Canada. He called himself a prince. And he meet with the Trudeau, and he is the big donator for Trudeau. Trudeau the turtle. This is your religion. Hashish. Bad women for bad men? So why there's good men, they marry bad women then? Is, is Noah a bad man? Is Lot a bad man according to you? What a stupid cult. <sighs> a nightmare, nightmare. Your Bible says it's uh, you, you are what? You are uh, forbidden? So what are you doing here? Hey, no, man, the Bible doesn't say, you stupid idiot. What did the Bible say? That what? Tell us what the Bible says. A man. <laughs> let me tell you, let me show you a clear sign of the smart Muhammad. Once a person is blind, he come to visit the Prophet. The prophet, he said to them, to the wives, wear hijab, put hijab. The wives, they said, but a prophet, the, the, the guy is, 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 is blind. He, he, he neither can see, 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 see us or, 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 or recognize us. Muhammad, after he got busted by women who supposedly have half a brain, he said to them, uh, okay, well, he is a blind. Are you blind too? And here you see a clear evidence that Muhammad is a hashish guy. Because the guy is a blind. And now if they put hijab, what happened? I mean, what different happened? He said, are you blind too? What the heck does that mean? Do Muslim women allow to see with their eyes? Why Muhammad is ordering the women to wear hijab in front of a blind man? Because they're not blind to. <laughs> so what is
does that mean? Muslim women, they cannot walk in the street and see men? Muslim women, they cannot see any men except their husband? Is that the case? The Muslim people say, no, we can't. So why are you saying, are you blind too? <laughs> The whole story is very simple. Muhammad, he got busted by two women. He didn't want to admit that he's a stupid when he ordered them to wear hijab because the, the guy is a blind. He didn't want to say, oh, I forgot that he's blind. You know, okay. Oh, I forgot he's blind. Yeah, or, you're right. He didn't want to say that. He say, okay, so what? Is he, are you blind too? This is what happened when your husband is a mule. When your husband is a mule, not a donkey, he's a mule. He's a stubborn mule. He don't want to admit that, okay, I'm wrong. The guy is blind and there's no point. Because now, even if they wear the hijab, still nothing changed. Still the guy cannot see them and they still can see him. Dummy, Mr. Mummy. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I was planning to make the video short, but you know, it's mission impossible for me to make the video short two hours already. So I want to say thank you for being here. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our brother, uh, Sheikh Ahmed. Sheikh Yumad is an ex-Muslim, as we told you. And uh, watch his last commercial break. It is hilarious, you know, so you can get your uh, black seed uh, order together before we are out of orders now people will think really I'm going to sell black seed <laughs> oh, really oh, <laughs> this guy is really something Sean Brins. commercial break hello babies if you have a problem what is your disease what is your situation what is your illness are you infected by co-corona take the nigla seed have cancer take the nigla seed you can't have babies take the nigla seed you have a mental illness take the nigla seed you have a problem with uh, you know functioning your hands are shaking your heart is not working take the nigla seed order now if you would like to order a neglis seed please go to Patreon and order www.patreon.com slash Christian Prince We have a limited stock please don't miss out Approved by a Prophet Muhammad Take care guys, God bless.